Hey guys, it's Hink here. So today we're going to be talking about a very important question that comes up all the time that we need to settle kind of once and for all, and that's how long should a routine be? Is more of a routine, a longer routine better, or is maybe a shorter routine better? And I actually have a pretty definitive answer for you today. Stay tuned. Now, you have to keep in mind, these papers are proving that penis enlargement works, but in the subsets of these different patient populations, there's one that's looking at patients post-prostatectomy, there's a couple looking at patients with Peyronie's disease, and then there's a couple with just basically short short penis syndrome, okay, or no an anatomically normal penis. Basically, all of these are proving penis enlargement, penis lengthening is possible. So just bear with me and, you know, please tell me about the comments if this is riddled with flaws or you disagree. All the comments help the algorithm. And if you don't mind, just take a second and thumbs up this video. It means a lot. My subscriber count has kind of tapered off, so I'd really help helping my channel grow. So the first paper we're going to look at looked at patients after a prostatectomy. So meaning they had prostate cancer and they got their prostate taken out. For the intents of this paper, it's going to be basically looking at groups that are basically 90 minutes or less, ideally less than a 60 minute routine as far as using a penis lengthening device like an extender. Or is it going to be longer than basically that 90 minutes to especially like a three hour mark? So this paper used either the penile traction therapy or PTT for either 30 minutes once a day, five days a week, or 30 minutes twice a day for seven days a week. And interesting, what they found is that there was no real difference between the daily group and the twice a day group as far as the penile length. And because there were no definitive outcomes, they included this quote, there were no notable differences in outcomes between the treatment protocols suggesting that the device may be effectively used for only 30 minutes daily, five days a week. So this is here, it's pretty clear evidence that maybe you don't need a long routine to see results because the length in this paper increased by 1.6 centimeters in six months. That's quite a bit of length. So this next paper we're gonna look at is actually a randomized trials of guys that had Peyronie's disease that were using these penile traction device. And they randomized to basically 30 minutes a day, 60 minutes a day, or 90 minutes a day. And then they assessed at basically three and then again at six months. And what they found is that among men who use traction for greater than 15 minutes daily for six months, 95% of them experienced length gains. And those with improvement in length games, once again, we're just talking greater than 15, one five minutes a day, had an average length gain of 2.2 centimeters. And they also had an improvement in actually the curvature, which was one of the things that they were studying in this paper of note, just because you correct a curve. So if you're bent like that, it doesn't necessarily add 2.2 inches, almost a, a 2.2 centimeters, almost a full inch. So I get it. You're right. It's perfectly valid to criticize the paper. But once again, the point of this whole video is not proving penis enlargement works by looking at people with Peyronie's disease. The point is to show the different lengths of the different groups to see which time period, which time frame is ideal, a longer time period or a shorter time period. And so they concluded in this study that the Restorex is going to improve your length in approximately 30 minutes per day. So once again, these are some of the papers showing that we're going to start with the shorter term papers versus the longer papers. And here I'll just include this graph or this chart here. You can see that the differences between zero to six months as far as the length gains. And yes, these are all significant values. So this next paper we're going to look at also looked at people with Peyronie's disease. And it was also using the same Restorex device. We're going to talk about the flaws, but one of the flaws, a lot of these shorter papers are all using this Restorex device. This is an expensive device. I would strongly caution you to, I am not promoting Restorex. I do think if you have Peyronie's disease and you're trying to correct a curve, quite honestly, I think that for Peyronie's disease, the Restorex is kind of the gold standard, but it's expensive, it's overpriced, which is what expensive means, duh. But I think that there are better options for traction that can still get you the results you want. So please don't watch this video and go out and go onto restorex.com and buy some like $300 device. If you do need high quality devices that work, we have them available, peakmalephysique.com, okay? If you wanna check them out and you wanna support me. So this paper right here was looking at using the Restorex device for 30 to 90 minutes per day. And what they found was that at three months, using the device for somewhere between 30 to 90 minutes a day, you had an overall improvement in length compared to the controls of 1.5 centimeters versus zero centimeters. So once again, 
We're talking about a short-term interval and we're still getting good growth. And so guys, this video is talking of course about Peyronie's disease. Peyronie's disease can be a side effect of any kind of penile enlargement. It can be a side effect of penile trauma and unfortunately just a side effect of sometimes masturbation or sex. If you haven't seen my video on toluene, you should check it out. That's part of the reason why I made our safeguard supplement. It is literally an anti-fibrotic formula made of all natural supplements, including things like toluene and N-acetylcysteine that are going to keep your penis healthy and minimize your chance of any kind of scarring or long-term damage from PE. So if you're interested, this is available on Amazon and it's available on leviathansubs.com. So now we're going to talk about the data. And I know I'm only talking about, I'm kind of pinpointing a few papers, but this is going to look at some of the longer data. So specifically longer than 90 minutes for m almost all of these studies, it's going to be three hours or longer. And so we're going to talk about, is it effective, more effective, what's the deal so this first paper we're going to look at is using a device that's called like the andro penis what it looked at and you can see in these different graphs here is that ideally it was three hours per day what's important with this study and with these graphs that you can see there was a lot of what we call like attrition meaning that the longer the study was conducted more and more people dropped out and more and more people were using the device for less and less and so one of the big things about saying you should do PE and you should use an extender for four to six hours a day they are not that many guys that are going to be willing to do that and so as a result people are going to stop doing it especially when they see that the results take a very long time meaning a long three to six months before you start seeing results I think that's one of the reasons why a lot of people are like oh PE doesn't work because I used an extender and I had to strap it on for four to six hours a day and sometimes sleep in it to get results I've noted in this study okay guys the recommended duration of a minimum of three hours of traction therapy was only completed in three patients, okay? 8.6% of the actual patients analyzed in this paper. Interestingly enough, in this paper, using it for more than three hours a day, it was actually relatively negative as far as stretched penile length. So another flaw of this paper, guys, they're using stretched penis length and not erect length for most of these studies. Some of it did include erect length, but what they saw is that for patients that did use it, they gained about 0.4 centimeters and patients who didn't use it actually experienced a decrease of stretched penis length by about the same amount, by about 0.35 centimeters. I don't think they had enough patients for that to be statistically significant or the p-value significant, but it was essentially a negative study. So here's a paper by Yaffe et al, or Yaffe et al, and basically what they looked at was traction therapy for greater than three hours a day with people with Peyronie's disease, but specifically this paper was looking at injecting in interferon alpha 2b or alpha 2 beta which was basically an agent to help further reduce the plaques in Peyronie's disease. They actually analyzed the people who were able to use the extender for greater than three hours a day and less than three hours a day. What they found was that yes, in this study, there was a significant benefit to using the extender for more than three hours a day, but get this guys. For those who used it more than three hours a day, they gained 4.4 millimeters, not centimeters, millimeters, compared to 1.3 millimeters. Now, that is statistically significant. I mean, can you imagine using a device for greater than three hours a day for over three months and only gaining 4.4 millimeters? I mean, hey, it's, it's gains, but once again, this is just not looking good for these longer use studies. Here's another paper by Gontero et al. that used an extender for greater than five hours a day. And what they found was, yes, the mean stretch flaccid length at six months increased by 1.3 centimeters. So a legit amount but once again, 1.3 centimeters for greater than five hours a day of having your D strapped into a device for six months, okay? In this next study we're gonna be looking at, now this was looking at extender devices in patients without Peyronie's disease, just normal functioning penises, but they just had basically dysmorphophobia or basically small penis syndrome. They thought their penis was smaller than it actually was. And so when using the extender, between 600 to 1.5 kilograms of force, four to six hours a day, at six months, the mean stretch flaccid increased by 1.3 centimeters once again. Okay, so yes, we're seeing gains, but quite honestly, compared to some of those other studies that we talked about with the shorter time interval, it's either as much or less. So let's, let's keep digging, stay with me. What's also interesting in this paper is that you can see here in this chart, in this diagram here, that most of the gains were actually in the first three months. I mean, it is like, we always talk about, hey, newbie gains are real. I mean, and this is clear clinical evidence that yes, in fact, newbie gains are real. But what happens if you notice is that basically the gains taper off. And I believe in the study, they did still say that there was a significant gains over that three to six month range, but without a doubt, almost all of the gains happened in that zero to three month range. So I know we're talking about 
the actual like total amount of time using a device per day rather than how long should you be using it. But I mean, it is something to think about. And so here's another paper looking at just purely short penis syndrome. So not Peyronie's disease, not any of these other things, but basically what they found is that four to six hours per day for the first two weeks and then nine hours per day until the end of the third month and three months basically led to a stretch penis increase of 1.7 centimeters. So nine hours per day in for three months for 1.7 centimeters. Now, I mean, that, that is quite a bit of length and you know, I'm sure for many of you that would be worth it in itself. Here's a beautiful table I'm gonna have Callie put up looking at essentially all of these studies that I've talked about. And if you look in the second to last column, well actually if you look at the, just the different tables, it lists the author and then it lists the number of patients. So you can see guys, a lot of these papers do not have very many participants. So guys, I mean it's limited, it's penis research, the data is limited, I know that's a flaw, okay? But if you look at the patient group, it'll tell you whether it's short penis or whether it's Peyronie's disease or whether it's, you know, penile dysmorphophobia. So you can know, it's like, okay, is this data coming from Peyronie's or just normal penises? Well, even more importantly, it has the duration of treatment, which tells you how many hours per day and how many months they looked at. And then it has the actual results. And so what I would encourage you to do is just pause the video right here on this table and take a look at some of this data yourself. Okay, but I am gonna summarize it in just a second. I did what I'm gonna call like my hink math. I'm sure if any of you statisticians are watching this, you're probably gonna be like pulling out your hair. But in general, I just wanted to take some of the growth that we see between three to six months in the shorter interval, which is typically between 30 to 60 minutes, as little as 15 minutes actually. So let's say 15 to 60 minutes of, of actual penile traction and compare that to at least greater than three hours, okay? And the numbers that I found was on average, with the shorter interval, you're seeing 1.76 centimeters or 0.7 inches is what was seen between three to six months of using that short duration between, once again, 15 to 60 minutes. So no more than an hour of, of traction therapy. But when we look at the greater than three hours, you actually have 1.18 centimeters or 0.46 inches in between three to six months. And so according to that, just like hink back of the napkin math, the actual shorter interval is gonna be more effective. If you're watching this video, this is part of where my research for my actual course, my penile enlargement course comes from. It's real freaking scientific data proving that this stuff works, that I synthesize and provide the most efficient, including time efficient, but most scientifically sound arguments for actual penile enlargement. So if you're interested, please check out my course. Link is in the description. What are some of the flaws of this? Well, I mean, one of the main flaws is like every single one of these studies is pretty much funded by a specific penile extender company, whether it be Restorex or Andropenis or, you know, peakmalephysique.com. I'm just kidding about the last one, but there is some kind of inherent bias, especially some of these Restorex devices that it's like 2.2 centimeters in three months using it 15 minutes a day. I just don't buy that. I don't think that's realistic. You're not going to gain an inch in three months using something 15 minutes a day. You're, you're not, you know, unless you just have terrible Peyronie's disease and your D is like a 90 degree angle and you're able to correct it and straighten it out like that. What are the conclusions? Well, number one, guys, penile enlargement works. I get it, some of these papers are with Peyronie's disease, but in general, there are several papers in here showing enlargement in normal penises with just guys that have small penis syndrome. All you dumbasses in the comments being like, penis enlargement doesn't work. I, I stand by that. Just use your brain and hear science, okay? So my number two conclusion is longer durations are not needed, okay? There is questionable evidence like that one paper that said there was a few millimeters of benefit for greater than three hours a day, but in general, you're seeing the same if not better results with a shorter interval protocol. I think that the longer your duration, like the longer you have your extender on, the more you're going to get tired of doing that. That's one of the reasons why I have switched to more of like a twice a day approach. Full disclosure, I got this from Dr. Brandeis. If you haven't seen my interview with him, he had his P-Long trial that basically used a twice a day approach and it was basically like 30 minutes in the morning and then 30 minutes in the afternoon. For me, that's much more feasible to do basically 15 to 30 minutes twice a day than to have just one sit down session of about an hour, okay? I talk about both approaches in my enlargement course, but I'm not gonna bring that up again. And I also think that it's important to track your stretched flaccid length, which is where most of these studies are tracking. Once again, there is 
measured in erect length in these studies. But I also think that you need to have realistic goals. You're not gaining an inch in a year. I really don't think you are. Is it possible? Absolutely. Do guys do it? Absolutely. But your goal should be, in my opinion, about a half an inch in a year because I think your stretch flaccid gains kind of supersede your actual erect gains by about six months in my experience. Anyways, I can't thank you enough for watching. If you made it this far, please like the video. If you haven't subscribed, I'd really appreciate it. Subscribe to this channel, help it grow further. Remember, there's nothing wrong with self-improvement, but you are enough just as you are. Peace and love, guys. If you have made it this far, I really appreciate it if you want to support me. Once again, our vigor is back in stock. It's on Amazon and LeviathanSubs.com. Top-rated Amazon Choice product. You should really check it out. We have our Virility, our Semen Load Booster, which is available. Once again, all of these based on clinical science, and they prove that they work. So I guarantee you these will work for you. We have our Vitality, our Testosterone Booster. We have our Safeguard, our Anti-Fibrotic Formula to make, your, make sure you're staying safe out there. going to minimize any chance of scarring. We have our Shield which is for nerve regeneration, increased nerve sensitivity, especially the guys that have lost it with death grip or that have injured themselves from doing PE. And of course, our Fortitude, our horny goat weed based, Icarin based supplement, which has improvements in both erection quality, penile nerve function, and overall penile health. I strongly want to recommend that you check out any or all of these. In fact, this is basically my daily stack. I know it's a lot, but I'm just being honest with you. But anyways, guys, I'll catch you on the next one. Peace and love.